Welcome to Get the Facts. This is the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. Today we're discussing predial larceny and its impact on farmers and the agriculture and fisheries sectors. We will also tell you what the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries is doing to protect the country's food chain. Now, providing that information is head of the Predial Larceny Prevention Unit, Superintendent Oral Pasco. Welcome to the program, Superintendent Pasco. Yes, thank you, sir, for having me today. All right, let's jump right into getting the facts. Yes, sir. First and foremost, please, give me an overview of the unit's functions. What does it do? So the Predial Larceny Prevention Coordination Unit was set up in about 20, 2014, 2015. Right. Its main purpose is to increase the awareness across across the island mm -hmm. of the plague or this, the, the, the scourge of Predial Larceny on our farming and fishery sector. Mm. The importance of it is that our role is to coordinate activities right across the island with all the stakeholders to ensure that we, we develop Right. preventative measures, as the word says, prevention. Yes, I noticed that. And, and we ensure that at the end of the day, the farmers benefit from what they grow, they reap what they grow, and that is the main emphasis of the unit. Right, and I can, I can assume that definitely you want the farmers, as one of the stakeholders, to feel secure yes. in their trade. That's correct. All right, so let's, 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 let's do a little definition here. Pretty larceny. I've come to understand, doesn't necessarily mean anything that is taken from a farm. No. That, Help us understand. Correct. So, predal larceny is one of the offenses under the Larceny Act. Mm -hmm. But actually, agriculture produce theft. The agriculture produce um, APA, Agriculture Produce Act, right. gives a wider definition of categories of items that are in, including fish, oysters, fish, and so forth. Right. So it's a much sure. wider, it's a much wider definition. You can charge someone for predator larceny if they steal stuff from the farm, right. but you can also charge them for larceny of cattle, larceny of goats, and so forth. Ah. The larceny is a very wide piece of legislation. Matter of fact, there's about 15 pieces of legislation that actually covers theft or, 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 or breaches of the offenses under the agriculture produced right across the board. And predial larceny is it's, one it's of them. It's that. one of But of course, because predial larceny, in definition in the law, has to do with agriculture produce, but mm -hmm. not necessarily as wide. It's very limited in the act itself. Aye. But the Agriculture Produce Act widens that boundary to include a lot of other, amongst other things. Understood, understood. So we use the word to generally mean we'll that. Use, yeah, we use the but, word. But legally, it legally. has a... Yes, Understood. You're correct. Understood. No, you mentioned prevention. I, I like the fact that prevention is in the name. That means there there are strategies, there are things that the unit and its stakeholders are doing to protect the sector. Could you tell us about some of the main strategies that um, are the structures that the unit has in place and are working on? Okay, so in terms of strategies and structures, one of the key things we, we, we try to do is to improve awareness among all the key stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So the farmers, for example, the farmers will need to be aware of what the, the, the laws are, or they affect them, or they right. can, um, for example, register, and or register and how it affects, or we actually do the police itself, mm -hmm. and the ministry do our enforcement and compliance of the laws. As right. I said, there are 14 pieces of legislation that affect the farmers and other stakeholders. So it is right. critical that we know what to do, all the stakeholders know, the police know that all the laws are in the books and mm -hmm. they know what. So for example, if someone goes on a farm and steals something, there's, 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 there's multiplicity of laws that you can apply versus just applying one and the person might just use a technicality and get off that. Right, and the police need to know that. Need to know that. Um, and, and so that's why continuous training is important and sensitization. Mm -hmm. There's even an effort in which currently we are looking at rolling out some sensitization programs across the board. Right. And this, there's one particular sensitization program we're looking at judiciary, because we can't train the judges, the judges are very learned. Right, right. But we can, we can sensitize on the wide spectrum of the applicability of the laws. Ah. And we can look at the police side, not only train the police that are in the units, in the divisions, because some divisions don't have a unit because they're in Kingston or St. Andrew. Right, right. And they're in the, 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 the urban side, so they wouldn't have a predator arson unit. However, the responsibility is very wide and encompass um, um, enforcement of the of the compliance aspects of it. So it's not only when somebody goes and report 
a crime. There are other aspects of the Agriculture Produce Act that if breached, for example, is a wide piece of legislation, the key legislation, and it has to do with the receipt book and so forth. So, okay, we've spoken about enforcement and compliance. You mentioned the legislation yes. framework, yes. generally. I want to talk about traceability as one of the structures. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the record book. And so, so, so for traceability, there are, there are about three main aspects of traceability as part of the matter of fact, the ministry has a four-pronged strategy generally. And right. I'm going to break it out and then probably, if you if you allow me, go through it individually. Sure, sure. So traceability is at the top, mm -hmm. and then there's enforcement and compliance, right. and then there is um, legal framework, right. or matter of fact, in terms of strengthening the legal framework, are the laws surrounding and applicable of the laws, updating and right, so forth. Right, as you were discussing. Yes, yes. and institutional arrangement, yes. the JAS, RADA, the police, the Ministry of Health, Public Health Inspectors, or all judiciary, everyone work together, work together to bring, to actually bring some level of um, um, conformity to the system. All right, so so those are those are the pillars, and you had started yeah, talking pillars. about it. But could you give us a bit more information about traceability itself? So traceability itself has to do with, there are three main elements I would have said earlier. There is a receipt book system, mm -hmm. which is the key and critical one. And yeah, tell us about that. So the receipt book system is that um, in order to get the receipt, uh, a receipt book to, to trade or to sell agriculture produce, which under the Agriculture Produce Act, mm. you will have to be registered with RADA. You have to be a registered farmer. So, so the institutional arrangement, the institutional comes, arrangement in here. comes in there. Yes, I could play it together, yes. So you register with RADA, and then once you're a registered farmer, you go on a database with all information, what crops you produce, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And of course, you can update it as you go along, and right. it is backed by law. And then no, once you get that, the Jamaica Agriculture Society, mm -hmm. they are the key ones. I think RADA does it too, that issues the receipt book. No, it is critical, because if you were to sell or receive agriculture produce, even if you are a farmer and you sell the things and you're an eagle and you pay your money and you didn't steal the things, mm -hmm. and you're transporting the goods, or you're caught in possession and you can't show where ah. you got these goods from, you'll be committing an offense. And, so, and the policies we're going after, we're, we're gonna be, that's why the compliance part is so important. We're pushing to increase the compliance rate. So let the me take let up is very low though. Uh, we're going to talk about that, but let me just jump in here to see if we can get some more of the facts. Enforcement and compliance. The, the police would show up uh, perhaps at a stall. Yes, you see, you see this produce. Yes. I should be able, as the higgler, to say, this is my receipt. Yes. Right? The farmer should be able to say, this is what I sold and yes. I have a receipt. Yes. So it, it, it's about being able to track the produce, animal, fish, um, yes. grown produce, as it goes. Am I getting that right? You are correct. The, so that, that, that is the main objective of it. However, someone goes to the farm yet they purchase. The farmer is always duly registered, gives them a receipt, that receipt. That person takes that receipt. There's an assumption the person is going to sell it directly mm -hmm. to the market or consume it. Right. However, the receipt book stops there. So uh, that is where we're saying about the, legis not the legislation. That, is the, 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 that aspect of the, the, the legislation framework strengthening comes in. Right. That is probably one of the downfalls of that system, so that is critical that we look forward to that, and that is probably in the, in, in the works to, to fix. All right, we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. I, I, we're going to go to our break shortly, but just before we do, you mentioned, um, does this unit operate across the island? We have national jurisdiction. Matter of fact, my, my official post is the Predilas, National Predators and Preventive Officer. Mm. So that's a national, and the, the, the unit has national jurisdiction ah. right across Jamaica. All right, so there is no place left uncovered in Jamaica by the Pretty Alasne Prevention Unit. Now, it's, we're going to go to our break right now, and uh, we've discussed very important information for all stakeholders in the agriculture sector to know, but there is more. So stay with us. Right after this short break, we continue this conversation with Superintendent Pasco. <music> Water where you're full up of roots and culture. <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going bust up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate it now. <laughs> 
They say the people them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see when our people decide, say the other people them free paper burn up. Them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta for it, you know. Medal. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. Why it pre? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yes. If you don't know the app, to get the updates then. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We are continuing our conversation with head of the Pradio Lasting Prevention Unit, Superintendent Oral Pasco. Now, we have discussed a great deal so far. Let's continue the conversation with some of the challenges that are affecting our, our farmers and our fisher folk in relation to theft. You mentioned at the start of our conversation, you used the word, and I remember, plague and scourge. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Tell us about what it's like on the ground. No. Farmers, most I think when I last checked the RADA database, there was 200 and about 42,000 registered farmers on the database. Mm -hmm. Now that's a large sector of our economy. This yeah, is a yeah. sector of our economy who, when you think about it, they feed us mm -hmm. and, and they have a family to feed. Now, when, when a farmer's um, farm is raided, his animals are stolen, it, it creates a disincentive for the farmers. And, yeah. and more often, when persons come to, to take what is not theirs, they, 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 they use force oftentimes, especially when they're stealing animals, and mm -hmm. farmers could lose their life or, or risk being injured. So it is critical that we look at the importance of the effect on the, the farmers individually, their families and the communities. Because when, of course, a farmer could invest um, in 10 acres of coconut jellies and mm -hmm. he only does five because right. he, he has a fear of predilation. So it is, it is one of those imminating factors that prevent expansion of the farming sector. And of course, when you expand the farming sector, it's actually one of those growth drivers of the Jamaica, the GDP. Right, yes. And of course, and of course, it is, and, and farming, you have to remember, you know, nationally, and apart from the effect on the farmers, mm. it is import substitution, because when right. we grow, when we grow what we need to eat, we don't have to import it, and that valuable US, our foreign currency, can be used to do something more important that, of course, to, to expand the economy and benefit for all of us. But also certainly export. Definitely. You know, we, we, Definitely. We try to join in the global market. And I'm very curious about the data, what the, what the data shows. Are we trending up or down? Well, well the data is, is, is consistent. Um, you would you'd want to believe that it is increasing. And I would want to believe that it is, it is, it is increasing. Because when crimes increase, um, um, Crimes, economic crimes also increase it because okay. when there's a squeeze, persons tend to go for the easiest. They think a farm is the easiest thing to go right. because nobody tends to it. So it is affecting, the data is showing, um, based on what I have, that on an annual basis, from about 2014 to about current, it's about over a thousand reported cases, I want to say. Reported, You're stressing uh, reported, reported, yes. <laughs> reported cases of predator last in the theft. Okay. And we're saying that based on when I, we go into, go into the field and we speak to the farmers and all the stakeholders, we realize that this is probably three or four fold higher. Uh -huh. and what a lot of farmers, they, they feel intimidated because the persons who steal from them, probably they are, some of them are fellow farmers, some of them are community members, and right. remember, most of our farmers done in the small communities. So that level of insecurity and security, they won't come forward. There's also an issue of when persons go and they go through the process and go through the courts. When the fine is given, they believe, so many times, they believe that that fine, they will get it to reimburse them for their loss. Uh. That's not the case. But under the Larceny Act, and that is why the, the, the education and sensitization is so important, there is a thing called restorative justice mm -hmm. in terms of restitution. Yes. It's there as one of those factors. We're not seen being applied enough, and that is why the sensitization across the board is important, that farmers feel like when they, we want to encourage them to report, but when they do report and we go put good what case happens? files in, for, yeah. we, they get a sense of justice. As a matter of fact, if, for example, animal stealing or yes. large-scale stealing, 
if the if somebody is convicted of it, I think since 2018, 2019, you, you ever heard of Proceeds of Crime Act? Right, right. Once it's agriculture produced, it is applicable. So not only that the person on the Larceny Act can, can be restored back some level of value, but going forward, the state can can prosecute the person on a proceeds of crime act and take away their assets. So it is a for restitution. Not well, restitution is there on a larceny act, uh -huh. but take away it and put it in our coffers. Ah. So they can take away the house as proceeds of crime because somebody's living a criminal lifestyle, stealing people's stuff, buying cars, yes. living in a nice house, the government on a proceeds of crime, like any other crime, can can seize those assets and liquidate it. You laid out the situation on the ground and I can just imagine how it is really when you live there and perhaps the person who has raided your farm is a part of the community. You know who they are, they know who you are. What measures can farmers take to safeguard their farms? Well, currently one of our main strategies is to, is to push the Farmers Watch and the Beach Watch program because the fisher folks are being affected by the stealing of engine and so forth and nets and yeah? hiding of fish pots and what? so forth. So that's why we say f uh, um, farmers, farmers and, and fisher, fisher folks. folks. Yes. And we're saying that farmers, like for example, they, they need to mark their, 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 their go through the process and register first. They have to register. Try to put identification mark. We'd have to brand the animals and so forth. Try to put fencing around their property. Mm -hmm. Put gates, for example, and try to monitor and don't be predictable. And if where they have animals beside the, their, their homes, try to put some form of security system in, some lights, of course. Right. And try to debush the general area and so forth and, 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 and try to ensure that they be more aware Mm -hmm. of, of, of some of these issues that can affect them. But the Farmers and Beach Watch, we think that the Farmers Watch program is one of those game changers. Just imagine farmers can come together in a community, they can join up and they can form a group and they can have the WhatsApp group and anything suspicious is going on. Because most of these thieves, the, 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 these predator, predator thieves and agriculture produce thieves, they are known. Yes. They are known and they are very habitual. That's uh -uh. what they know. They steal coconut over and over. They steal produce over and over and that's, that's what they do for a living. And if you come together, your farmers a group. The issue we're having with the farmers' Watch group is that there's the, the sustainability of these groups are not there. When there's an incident, everybody wants a farmer group to protect themselves. But when when that when get cold and get comfortable again, they, they don't have any interest to go to the meetings. Ah. And that is why we are working on those aspects of the not only farming the groups, but ensure that we have sustainability built in, as and then use that mechanism as one of the major mechanisms to help the farmers protect themselves along with putting in personal things around to protect their produce and crops. I'm, I'm happy that you brought in the fisher folk as well because that's an element that we tend not to think about. So you gave us a, a look at what that looks like. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure we could ask about, we mentioned the institutional framework yes, and I know right. that there's the provision for them to access many of these things or funding for it from these institutions. So the, the opportunity is there, that's you know. Right. Uh, we're almost out of time. Okay. We're almost out of time. But I want to give you the opportunity to say a final word to our viewers. You are on the ground. You see what's happening. Encourage them. Uh, give them some incentive. Tell them what you'd like them to hear. So we, we, I'm going to speak to the farmers and, 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 and the citizens. Citizens, if you know of, 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 of where persons are, are trading in um, illicit agriculture produce, call the police. Call the police. Tell someone. And of course, farmers, we're asking you to ensure that you register with RADA. Get your receipt book and at least put up some level of traceability. If you have animals like cattle, please join up with the NATE program and get them registered. So if we were to do investigations and we were to do raids and supermarkets and wholesales and meat shops, we can then trace back that meat to someone and get, a, get them arrested. Most of these animals stealing, they are rings. People join up in group and there's still goats and cattle and so forth. So help us to help you and please join all farmers, join and beach fisher folk. Please join a farm watch program and be active, active in that program and the fisher folk were saying the same thing. We need to join a beach watch, farm one if there's none and call us and we will definitely try to assist you in getting that done. All right. So this has been Get the Facts. It's a lot of information to absorb, but we'll ensure that these facts are available for you on our YouTube page. Our guest has been head of the Pradial Larceny Prevention Unit at the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Superintendent Oral Pasco. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care.